friends, welcome to the United Kingdom. We're gonna do some arts and crafts um, inspired by the United Kingdom's culture. But first, we're gonna share with you a little bit about what we've learned. Georgia, sit in your seat so we share. So the United Kingdom is an island country located off the northwestern coast of mainland Europe. The United Kingdom comprises the whole of the island of Great Britain, which contains England, Wales, and Scotland, as well as the northern portion of the island of Ireland. The name Britain is sometimes used to refer to the United Kingdom as a whole. And the capital is, you guys know? Uh, uh, London. London. <laughs> We're going to show the flags in a minute. The capital is London, which is among the world's leading commercial, financial, and cultural centers. Here are some flags of the United Kingdom that Georgia and Arden made. This one's mine. <laughs> okay, guys. We have a couple of maps and we're going to show you the area of the United Kingdom. So this is a map of Western Europe, this whole yeah. section. And George is pointing, Arden is pointing to him. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Move your fingers now, guys. The yellow section is a section of the United Kingdom. So I'm going to show you a one more, a little more detailed map. Um, oh, so, Britain. so this is um, all of Europe, right? And then here is Great Britain, United Kingdom right over there and then if you zoom in there watch out guys so we can put this there we go and you can see um, United Kingdom there in the pink um, so the United Kingdom has made significant contributions to the world economy especially in technology and industry since World War II however the United Kingdom's most prominent exports have been cultural including literature theater film television and popular music that draw on all parts of the country. Perhaps Great Britain's greatest export has been the English language, now spoken in every corner of the world as one of the leading international mediums of cultural and economic exchange. So of all the contributions, um, arts are right at the center of what Great Britain has offered. Um, from the plays of William Shakespeare to the music of the Beatles, British art has had a tremendous impact on the world culture. Writers from every part of the United Kingdom joined by immigrants from parts of the former British Empire and the Commonwealth have enriched the English language and world literature alike with their works. British studios, Playwrights, directors, and actors have been remarkable pioneers on stage and screen. British comedians have brought laughter to diverse audiences and been widely imitated. British composers have found devoted listeners around the world, as have various contemporary pop groups and singer-songwriters. And British philosophers have had a tremendous influence on shaping the course of scientific and moral inquiry. From medieval, medieval time to the present, this extraordinarily flowering, this extraordinary flowering of the arts has been encouraged at every level of society. Early royal patronage played an important role in the development of the arts in Britain. And since the mid 20th century, the British government has done much to foster their growth. So one of the world's greatest and most famous playwrights of all time came from Britain in the United Kingdom from the England England and from the London area. And who was that? What? Who's the playwright we're gonna tell everyone about? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, that's right. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about William Shakespeare. Um, he was born in a small ca uh, country town called Stratford upon Avon. Um, and he was born in April of 1564, and he lived to April of 1616, so month to month. Um, so he was born in the small country town of Stratford-upon-Avon in the, in the county of Warwickshire, but left his family for the big city of London. And between 1590 and 1613, Shakespeare wrote at least 37 plays and collaborated on many more um, many more plays than that. So Shakespeare's acting company was named the Lord Chamberlain's Men, and Shakespeare is part owner in the company as well as an actor and the resident playwright. Um, and they performed their shows and wrote their shows for um, a very famous theater. Do you remember the name of their theater, guys? What was the name of their theater? Uh, the Globe Theater, right? The Globe Theater. So Arden, do you want to share a little bit about um, your things that you know about Shakespeare? Mm -hmm. OK, 
Okay, so Arden has a book he would like to share with you guys where he read a little bit about Shakespeare. Can you show him what book it is? It's called Stage Fright on a Summer Night, right? Mary Pope Osborne is part of the Magic Treehouse series. So what did you learn, Arden? Um, um, why, she, why she has black teeth. Why who has black teeth? Queen, the Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth had black teeth. Because she ate too much sugar. She ate too much sugar. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else did you learn? The bridge. Yeah. You can say. You can talk about that. I love the song. We can do that too. So Arden learned a little bit about a famous I, bridge that's in London. So maybe our the friends at home might know. London was London Bridge. The bridge. Part of London was London Bridge. The bridge crossed the river. At different times in history, the bridge fell down, but it was always built again. Yeah. That's right. Very cool. Georgia, do you know a famous song that was written about that bridge? London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Good. <laughs> I have one more tidbit he would like to share. At the arena called the Bear Garden, people watch bears fight with dogs. Animal fights were common, were common sport in Old England, but they are against the law today. Very good. Okay, guys, so we're going to make our first craft for the United Kingdom. Here's the United Kingdom bag if you were able to stop by the Guild Festival and pick one up that has all your supplies. And if you're at home, these are all items you have at home. Um, you just need 20 coffee filters, a hole puncher, um, a pair well, no scissors. Yes, a pair of scissors, um, a stapler, and a ribbon. So if you can gather those items, I'm going to tell you a little bit about these collars. So Elizabethan collars, also called ruffs, served as a changeable piece of clothing um, that they could be laundered by themselves because they weren't able to wash their clothes every day. So it kept the doublet, which was an outfit, and a gown um, from being soiled at the neck because there was also no electricity, so it was hot. So they were sweating a lot. So this would maybe catch some of the sweat and they could wash it. But it also forced everybody to sit up straight. Because Arden, are they very comfortable? No. They're not very comfortable. So you have to sit up straight when you wear them. So um, because of that, they improved posture and became a symbol of wealth and status. So um, most everyone, except for the lowest class, wore these collars during um, Shakespeare's time at some point. So a lot of them may have been seen on stage as well. So to make one, George is on step two, but what you're gonna do is get out your coffee filters. We're kind of in stages. And start folding them. Yes, that's right. So Arden, you take one. George is already on stringing hers, but you're, so you'll have 20. Get just one of them at a time, so they're nice and thin, and you're gonna fold it completely in half. Make sure to line it up. And crease it. Oh, can I make two of them so I can wash one? Sure, well, we're going to make one for Asher, too. Oh, can I make well, I don't know that these will be durable to wash. They're coffee filters, <laughs> so they may not be durable. So you'll fold it once, twice to get to here, and then three times over. And then when you get to this point, you take your stapler and you move on up about, not quite midway, maybe a third of the way up. You give it a good staple, about right there, and then right under the staple, you follow up with a hole puncher, so you have a hole in it. And then what you're going to do is take your ribbon, and you're going to string them one by one into the middle of the ribbon. Um, and you can tie a knot at the end if you need to while you're working, but it's really best at the end if you have both loose um, edges. So you can see this is what it looks like when it's finished. Georgia is um, starting the process of, of, of um, putting them on the ribbon. And then for Asher, we're gonna go ahead and start um, with folding. So we'll do a couple more with you. And then it's just a repetitive process. So you can pause the video and um, do this process. And when you've got them all stringed on and you're ready to tie them on, um, you can turn the video back on and we'll show you how to make that happen, how to tie it on. And then, of course, we have some um, other activities to do. So feel free to pause the video and do your collar and join us when you're done. Okay, so Georgia finished threading hers. So this is what it looks like. It's okay that they're all in the middle. You'll have room to spread them out. So Georgia's going to turn around and put it right here on the front. And I'm just going to give a little bit of loose uh, bow right here. And then she's going to spread it out. Turn it around. Oh my gosh, it looks great! Look at that! 
Okay, so now we need to perform. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about sonnets. So here we go, you ready? So in your bag, I love it. In your bag, you will find um, a piece of paper that talks about sonnets. So let me talk about what a sonnet is. So this is a festival Shakespearean sonnet is what it says at the top. So one of the world's greatest and most famous playwrights, oh, and I should say, if you were watching at home and weren't able to pick up a packet at um, the Guild Festival, um, there's a PDF link that you can print, print this out from home as well. And of so, course, we have coffee and coffee filters. Oh, yes, coffee filters is what we use to make the things. So, um, so one of the world's most famous playwrights of all time lived in England in the city of London. We talked about that, William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was not only a playwright, he also wrote poetry. During the time of the bubonic plague, the, the theaters were closed for two years. Because, well, because people could not gather safely. There was a plague going that was passing from person to person, and so they, had to, they weren't able to gather in groups or go out of their houses. They had to stay um, uh, away, so they had to close the theaters. Well, they have the plague going along, uh, around, but just like we have coronavirus right now, we can't all gather safely, which is why some people are doing children's hill for home. I couldn't help but draw a little parallel there. Why did they close down there? Mom. They, well, just like right now, the theaters are closed Mom. in Broadway. Thank you, Asher. <laughs> Playing eggs while we're doing so our was video. There, so, was, so was it like a virus? The plague was like a virus, yes. Um, but it was really, really horrible, and it killed a lot of people very quickly. How is it? Oh, so we have a couple Shakespeare's here. Do you know that Shakespeare was also called the Bard? Uh oh. Should we have another Shakespeare? We have a couple. We have a couple right. Bards. Look okay, at Shakespeare. We have three Shakespeare's. Oh, Shakespeare. Oh, what are we gonna do? A little mini Shakespeare. A little mini Bard. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, look. We have another bard who joined us. <laughs> so William Shakespeare was also called the bard. Okay, so we have one, two, three Shakespearean collars, Elizabethan collars, ruffs, ready. So um, Shakespeare was also called the bard. That's something else to consider. So now what we're going to do is if you can um, reach in your packet, uh, again from festival, and pull out this sheet on sonnets. So, um, you know, William Shakespeare was one of the most famous playwrights of all time. He lived in London, England during the time he wrote the play. And um, he was not only a playwright, he also wrote poetry. Um, and during the time of the bubonic play, the theaters were closed for two years. And because people could not come to the theater and, you know, people were getting sick. Um, so during the time the theater was closed, Shakespeare focused on poetry. Uh, so, Shakespeare wrote a collection of 154 sonnets. A sonnet is a 14-line rhyming poem written with a special tempo or distinct meter called iambic pentameter. Shakespearean sonnets are written in A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G rhyming scheme. Each line in the sonnet is composed of 10 syllables and each alter alternating syllable is first unstressed and then stressed. So everything is said like this. Da 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So unstressed, stressed. So ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da So this pattern was used because it was most clearly resembled um, the natural rhythm of speech. Okay. So we created a template below, and again, if you're home and you were unable to come pick up a packet, there's a PDF you can print at home. So there's a template with missing syllables. The line, each line there on this side, um, is represents a missing syllable. So you can write your own poem. Okay. So let me share the sonnet we wrote about festival with you. Festival is always so much fun. Displayed and sold, the weekend long is art. A little something here for everyone. Each year, the whole community takes part. Tradition lasting 57 years. It's hard for me to name my favorite part. And one so many hold so very dear. Festival each year fills up my heart. Find arts around the globe in Children's Hill. Music and dance performances I see. Discovery and learning is a thrill. 
aren't celebrated in community. It's always sad to see the weekend end. Don't worry, it will be here soon again. <laughs> okay, so the last thing we're gonna do in United Kingdom is play an old Elizabethan game that's still played today. So in your packet, you will have this um, piece of cardstock. And before we play, you'll want to cut out the white pieces and the black pieces, and this is your game board. And again, if you're at home, you can either draw one of these out, um, or you can print the PDF uh, on our website to be able to play. Okay, so this game is called Nine Men's Morris. Um, and the Elizabethans played this game just the way we're gonna play it today. But during the Renaissance, um, the children were actually used as the counters while playing in a big field. Can you imagine, instead of these dots, it was just, hey children, go stand on these spots and that's how they played the game. Isn't that pretty funny? So the rules of the game are found in your um, little baggie from Festival. And if you're at home, again, you can find a PDF and print it off of our website. But it's basically um, a big version of tic-tac-toe with some extra moves along the way on a bigger board, um, and it's lots of fun. Goodbye! Thanks for joining us in the United Kingdom. And it's You're festival. so welcome anytime! <laughs>